Hello, welcome to session 12 of PHS 308, which is titled Public Policy Evaluation. In this session, we are going to just focus on five main topics. We will look at the definition of policy evaluation, we will look at the positivist and a post-positivist evaluation, we will look at policy evaluation as learning, we will look at types of policy evaluation and the outcomes of policy evaluation, that is policy feedback and policy termination. Now, simply put, Policy evaluation refers broadly to the stage of the policy process at which it is determined how a policy public has actually fared in action. It involves the evaluation of the means being employed and the objectives served. In other words, policy evaluation basically tries to assess whether or not the objectives or the intentions of the original policymakers have been achieved. Okay, so that is what we mean by policy evaluation. There are a number of approaches to policy evaluation. We have the positivist approach, which views evaluation as the objective, systemic, empirical examination of the effects ongoing on policies and the public programs have on their targets in terms of. So there are two main approaches to policy evaluation. We have the positivist approach and the post-positivist approach. Now, the, po the positivist approach suggests that Evaluation is an objective process. It is backed by, it is marked by empirical evidence. And so basically saying that we go out there, we take data, we do some measurements, and we are able to arrive at a conclusion as to whether or not the policy has achieved its aims or not. According to this school, such an approach is objective as it, as it relies on the scientific process of data collection and analysis to arrive at conclusions about the failure or success of a policy that are empirically verifiable. Now there are some flaws of the positivist school. As policy goals are often neither clear nor explicit, they necessitate subjective interpretation to determine what was actually achieved. In other words, one of the fundamental assumptions of the positivist school is to suggest that policies always have clear, cut and explicit goals, which is not necessarily the case. And so sometimes we need the the net, we need the subjective approach to be able to determine whether or not a policy has been a success or a failure. And then secondly, there are difficulties in, de in developing neutral standards by which to evaluate government success in dealing with societal problems. This is quite self-explanatory. The post-positivist school gave impetus to the positivist. The flaws of the positivist school gave impetus to the post-positivist approach, which views policy evaluation as an inherently political activity despite its technical component. Some who carry this position to its extreme argue that since different evaluators evaluate the same conditions differently, there is no definitive way of determining the correct definitive mode. Hence, the interpretation that prevails is a product of political conflicts and compromises. So as the name suggests, they argue that it is very difficult to arrive at an objective assessment as to whether or not a policy has succeeded Usually it is rather a process filled with compromise, a process imbued with negotiation. That is the way we arrive at well, as to whether or not the policy has succeeded and not always necessarily um, an objective process because sometimes it is difficult to even measure the, whether or not the policy has clear goals, clear or explicit goals. Now, there are flaws in both the positivist and the post-positivist schools, and these flaws led to what became known as policy evaluation as the uh, policy evaluation as learning approach. Now, according to this perspective, actors engaged in policy evaluation participate in policy learning, which makes it possible to improve policy making by assessing how previous stages of the policy cycle affected original goals adopted and means of implementation. So, if we look at policy as learning, it allows policy analysts to be able to look at, um, to, to be able to examine how, <coughs> to be able to examine how original goals were. Let me take it again. The flaws of the positivist and the post-positivist schools spearheaded what came to be known as the policy evaluation as learning school. Now, according to this perspective. Actors engaged in policy evaluation participate in policy learning, which makes it possible to improve policy making by assessing how previous stages of the policy cycle affected original goals, adopted, and means of implementation. The characteristics of policy learning include the following, that it is associated with intentional progressive cognitive consequences of the education of, 
of the education from policy evaluation. That it includes both the intended and unintended consequences of policy, policy making activities. That it is an iterative process of acquiring knowledge about the nature of policy problems and solutions to address them. There are three main types of evaluation. We have administrative evaluation, we have judicial evaluation, and we have political evaluation. We're going to take each of these one after another. Now, administrative evaluation is usually taken by government administrative agencies and they tend to focus on efficient delivery of public services and they want to determine whether or not whether or not value for money has been achieved its major objective is to ensure that policies achieve their objectives but at the least possible cost with the least burden on individual citizens we also have judicial evaluation which focuses on matters of legality connected to the manner in which policies are implemented the major actor in this process is the judiciary and usually they do so through the process of judicial review and we say that such reviews can be taken by the courts on its own initiative or when asked to do so by an individual or an organization. We also have political evaluation and we say that unlike administrative and judicial evaluations, anybody at all can engage in political evaluation as long as you are a citizen or as long as whatever decision that has been taken affects you. We say that often these are innately partisan, they are biased, and they are one-sided. Elections provide an important platform for citizens to render judgment on government's performance. Now, there are a couple of outcomes of policy evaluation. One, a policy can be judged successful and continued in its present form. So depending on the evaluation on, and the outcome of that evaluation, a policy can be judged successful. Again, a policy can be judged having difficulties in achieving its intended objectives. The policy will have some challenges here and there. And then lastly, a policy can be judged a complete failure leading to its termination. Of course, if a policy is not succeeding, the only way out is to terminate a policy and sometimes even begin a new policy. To conclude, we say that policy evaluation is an attempt to determine the performance of a policy after implementation. There are three main schools of thought dominate policy evaluation in policy studies. We have the positivist school, we have the post-positivist school, and we have policy evaluation as learning school. That, that the three groups of evaluation are administrative evaluation, judicial evaluation, and political evaluation. That policy evaluation produces three outcomes. When a policy is judged as success, when, pol when a policy is judged wanting, and when a policy is judged a complete failure, in which case the policy would have to be terminated. So this brings us to the end of session 12. Please get ready as we continue with session 13.